Hello everyone, in this recipe, we're going to take a look at a complete configuration for setting up an off to login feature with GitHub. We know that the off to login runs the authorization called grant underneath the hood, right? And that's the reason why it needs to follow the off to standard as well. Let's take GitHub as an example. So first of all, when a resource owner comes to a client, in this case, resource owners is our user and clients is our Spring Boot application. Then our Spring Boot app wants to know who the user is, so it triggers the off to login features that runs the authorization call flow. First, redirect user to the GitHub Identity Server, which is in off to term an authorization server by using the authorization URI. Here, user needs to validate himself or herself against GitHub and accept scopes in a consent page. When everything is successful, the user will be redirected back to our Spring Boot application with an authorization code by the redirect URI that we sent together with the authorization URI. We will demo it in a little bit. At that time, our Spring Boot app will retrieve the code and exchange it with GitHub Identity Server for an access token by this token URI here. When having the token in place, our Spring Boot app can use this token to code to the corresponding APIs in GitHub API Server, the resource server. The resource itself is this API, for example. In this case, we need user information. So the resource here is the user info API. And our Spring Boot app will call this API with the set token to identify the user. And after that, create a section for that user in our Spring Boot application. So if we notice in this journey, the user create two sections, one at the GitHub identity server and one at our Spring Boot app server. They are separated sections belong to each system and it's important to distinguish between these two. We'll demo them in a second as well. You now might ask, where do we find this UI, the authorization UI and the token UI? So they are listed down here. This is the authorization UI that redirects user to request their GitHub identities. And this is the token UI when user are redirected back to our Spring Boot app with an authorization code and the app will exchange this code for an access token. For more information, you can find it here. I will put them into the description below. Now, theories is enough. Let's move on to our Postman to experiment this API. First off, the authorization URI. We will provide it with some required query parameters like response time, client ID, scope, state, redirect URI. As you may see in the documentation here, there's a query parameter we have to provide, right? Plan ID, redirect UI, login, scope, state, allow sign up, prompt. So you may not see the response tie in the doc. So basically it's non-effective here, but I'll keep it for all of two compliant because in all of two spec, this one. So response tie is a required field and must be set to code, right? So that's why I have it here, so like response type code. So feel free to ignore it if you like the client ID. So if you don't know what is it, you may want to take a look at the video of to login with GitHub compact configuration. So here I'm going to copy it from the application. Right, so I have it here, GitHub client ID, then paste it here. For the scope, you can think of it as the role in role-based access control in Spring Security. We restrict user to the corresponding data by his or her role. Here we need to retrieve user info data. So we need to accept the user role file. Here, the user role file. This API. And in order to access this API, we need the user scope, right? So I take a look at the OAuth 2 scope. Then in the user scope, we want to get the user profile data. So that's why we need the read user scope here. That's why let's copy it and paste here. Stage is an arbitrary string that when we send it to the authorization server and on the redirect UI back to our application, we receive the same state to know that this redirect UI belongs to the authorization UI in the user section. The last one, redirect URI. This should be matched exactly with the one in the app registration process. So if you remember from the compact configuration video, it's the HTTP local 8080 logging off to code GitHub. 
we cannot call it directly in the Postman. So we're going to copy it and paste it in our browser. Now it's a communication between user and GitHub Identity Server to validate user and the consent on the scope rented. After everything is done, GitHub redirects user back to the redirect URI that we provided. Remember, localhost 8080 login off tool called GitHub right? with scope and state. Since we're not running application, so we received an error here, but it doesn't matter. We want to do it manually, right? Now let's imagine we are the application, and from the application perspective, we need to check if it's the valid redirect or not by checking the state. So the state here is 123ABC, and the state from the authorization URI is also state 123ABC. So we know exactly that this redirect URI is for our authorization URI. Now we're able to get the code and exchange it for an access token by the token URI. Let's come to the token URI. So here at SEMET, the authorization URI, we need to provide some parameters, but this time in the body, in the request body, the form URL encoded, run type, code, redirect URI. Beside that, we need the basic authentication as well using the client ID and the client secret. Okay, let's back to our documentation. So for the token UI as well, right? We need the client ID and client secret, the code, the redirect URI. Here again, you might not see the run type. It again belongs to all of two standard. Feel free to don't care about it. So the code here is from the redirect URI. Let's paste it here. And the redirect URI, we might want to put it as same as the one in the authorization URI. Some authorization server want to check it. So in the authorization URI, we have this one. And let's get as same as the redirect URI in this one. Line ID, line secret. Yeah, of course, it's the GitHub line ID and GitHub line secret. Let's copy it. Another thing is adding the header. Accept application JSON. So take a look at the documentation. So by default, the response is like a string, right? But if you add the accept header application JSON, it will return us a JSON. Okay, let's run it. Now we have an accept token with a required scopes that allow us to call to get the authenticated user. Remember this API, API doc github.com slash user with a uh, scope user okay scope user and api github.com slash user then let's call it with beaver token here we're going to a uh, beaver token and the token is a uh, set token let's copy the set token and paste it here okay send all right it returns the user info with this user info, our Spring Boot app can finalize the user login process, create a user section for the user, and buy the section ID to the user cookie. So the second time user accept, it won't restrict the flow anymore. Okay, now we know all the necessary information needed for setting the app to login with GitHub. It's not simply by providing only client ID and client secret at our compact configuration here. It's time to try the hard way. So in order to use an authorization server, we need to know where it is, right? Spring Boot used provider to provide this information. Provider. Let's call it my GitHub. So here are all the available configuration properties for a provider, but we don't need to provide all of them because we know the flow. We know which properties needed. Basically, we only need the authorization URI, the token URI, and the user info URI, right? So our flow here, authorization URI, token URI, then the user info URI. So, let's, so this is our authorization URI here. Token URI and the user info URI. 
So this is where our GitHub Identity Server is. Another important thing is the username attribute. This is the attribute from the user info response that we want to be our username. This is our username. If you take a look at the hello controller here, right? So this is our user and if you want to get name. So it will depend on the username attribute here. Usually we should choose some fields that are unique like the subject, the email or ID. For example, in this case, I know this ID is unique, right? And I will choose this one. So at the end, we will ring hello uh, 11.0.11.60.89. So we extract the field to be our name. Okay. Now we need to create a registration that use this provider. Let's call it a uh, complete GitHub. Provider, so my GitHub here. So it means that this registration will use the my GitHub provider. What else? So we now have the client IDs and line secret, of course. Line ID, line ID, okay, line ID, line secret, like line IDs is used in both the authorization UI and the token UI, right? And client secrets is used in the token UI only. So that's why we need them. Line ID, client secret. Is there anything else? Before that, the scope here, uh, we need the scope, right? In the authorization, read user. Oh, scope. Redirect UI, okay. We need the redirect UI. The state parameters itself is generated, auto-generated by Spring. So we don't have to provide that. Client authentication method. This is by default the client authentication method. Client authentication method. So it's a client secret basic. So it means that we are going to use the basic authentication with client ID and client secret in the token here. So we're going to use the line ID and line secret as basic authentication in the token URI. So it means that, so if you don't specify it, this is the default one. What else? The authorization rent type. Authorization rent type here. Of course, we're going to use the authorization got rent, right? So let's copy this one. Okay, and the name. So let's call it complete, complete GitHub client registration. Okay, that's beautiful. Let's run it. Okay, let's try to set it. Now we see the complete GitHub client registration, right? Let it. And then, hello, 11.0.11.60.89. That's what we expected, right? Okay, now put the red point at the HTTP section security contact repository. Let's try to HTTP here and let's try to put the red point here. So this is where we receive the HTTP section and then get the user information back. Okay. And now let's inspect element. Then we're going to the application, you know, cookie and activity. Yeah, so we see now we have the section IDs from our Spring Boot app released for, for us, right? So basically, after we log in successfully, our Spring Boot app will going to create a section and link this section ID to the cookies for us. So for later access the API, we don't have to run the all upload again. Okay, now let's try to test it. Basically, we would like to call our API again, right? Bam. And you see the section, our section, our HTTP section is you know, like B9AF, right? B9AF. So B9AF. So it is exactly the section. And based on this section, we get back our user. 
So we get back our user, right? Off to user from the complete GitHub. Okay, let's run through it. So we now no longer have to run the authorization code flow again. So it's like a basic login form. After you log in successfully, then we have a section for later set. Okay, let's try to remove this section and run it again. Okay. This time we will be asked to opt to logging again. Reasonable, right? But one thing different. Remember that we just logged GitHub using GitHub username and password just a minute ago, right? So similar context. We get a section with GitHub. And this time we won't have to log in, in GitHub again. This will automatically redirect user with a code and our application is changed with a set token and the user URI is called. Let's try it. Then everything is processed behind the scene and now so continue here is mean that it just ran the auth to load and back to the original request. The original request is just here, right? So now I hope us understand that two sections related after auth to logging, as we mentioned in the earlier of this video. And our application is section cookie based, or we can say a browser based app. So never disable CSRF in this case. Now back to the application of YAML, you may want to ask why this compact configuration work? It's because there are some common providers are configured. So here you see string providers with some common provider like Google, GitHub, Facebook, and Octart. So if you use one of these providers, we can use the compact configuration because the other Characteristic, right? Like the authorization URI, the token URI, user info URI, uh, the scope, right? Are auto configured for us. Okay, this video is long enough, but before we end this video, let's take a quick look at Postman. It supports a very convenient way to get the token. Here we make them three separate requests because I'd like to explain step by step to use the auth to flow. But you can use the auth to here to go to the re our resource API instead of providing the beer token, right? We can go to the auth to, and here we can provide this property as same as our Springboard app. For example, we name it the GitHub auth token, a runtime authorization code, right? The runtime, the callback URI, runtime. Authorization called the callback URI. Here, the redirect URI is the callback URI. The authorization URI, the authorization, the token, set token, line ID and client secret. Okay, line ID, line secret. Let me get it from here. Line ID, line secret. Secret scope, uh, scope, reduced state, for example, ABCD. Okay, basic authentication header. So, this is a same at client secret basic. So, basically, using the basic authentication with client ID and client secret, and that's it. Okay, then just press the get new asset token then you will be asked for logging using your github credential like username and password here i already login user the github credential that's why my section is there so that's why i right away got the asset token but maybe in your case you will have to you know type your username and password okay so basically we have the asset token then we can use the token so basically, if you click use this token, the token is copied to here. With that being said, you can just click send. And now we got the response. Alright, that's pretty really much it for this recipe. I hope you got something new out of it. Thank you so much for taking your time watching this recipe and the series. And as always, see you next time. Happy coding!